All right. Well, uh, I mentioned it there moments ago. The Lions have made a move. Now, I've watched this over the years, and I'm going to say I think fans love this kind of stuff. The turning over of every stone. The try, and and for lack of a better term, the try to be the smartest guy in the room maneuver. And that is, we're going to do something a little outside the mold and find a guy. Like, remember that rugby player? There was a rugby player. There was Kicklicious. I think there was a, a quarterback named Pringle. Wasn't there at the Lions side for the CFL? And they've just made a move like that. According to at CFL.com, the man that led the CFL in sacks last year, Matthew Betts, has signed with the Detroit Lions. Last year, he played in all 18 regular season games with the British Columbia Lions, and he had 18 sacks. Led the CFL in sacks, 6'3", 250, straight out of Laval. The Detroit Lions have signed Matthew Betts. Bet. <laughs> right, Doug? That was really bad, but yes. <laughs> I think Gator would appreciate it. He probably would have. Or maybe not. He's 28 years old. He originally did have a stint in the NFL. He was drafted in the CFL May of 2019, but signed as an undrafted free agent with the Bears instead. Went to Bears camp, made it to the final cuts in the preseason. He was cut, and then he bounced between Edmonton and B.C., and at 28 years old, he led the CFL in sacks last year. Do I have an expectation now for Matthew Betts? No. I really don't. But I think fans love this stuff. You're absolutely right, Doug. Fans do love this stuff. And I actually, speaking of Gator, I think he would too. Like these are, you mentioned the the you know rugby and the kickalicious and all that stuff. Remember um, Caleb Campbell from, I think it was Army or Navy, yeah. Was, you know, he had to sit out a couple of years or whatever. I think people, you're right. They love, don't leave any stone unturned. Go, you know, go beyond where everyone else is willing willing yep. to go. Find, you know, find the dude at the grocery store, like Kurt Warner, whoever. Yep. This guy, yeah, you know, he's going to be brought up by Lions fans this offseason. Without question. <laughs> and do you remember Pringle, the quarterback? Wasn't there a quarterback named Pringle? I'm sure I can do a Google search. A quick Lions sign CFL quarterback. It'll pop up. Now, is this ridiculous that people like this? No. Because that's what got you the Russian five. Right? That was thinking outside the box. That was expanding into new territory. That was checking on an overseas dude. And what happened? They started getting first round talent in every round in the draft. This isn't the first time the Lions have hit the CFO. You mentioned the quarterback. Wasn't there a kicker, too? Didn't they sign a kicker from the CFO? I don't, I don't know. I By the way, like- if you Google search Lions, make sure you use the word Detroit Lions because there's the British Columbia Lions as well. <laughs> yeah, and that's where he's from. Yes, exactly. Matthew so- Betts. Um, well, Aubrey, the kicker for the uh, Cowboys, who was probably right behind Justin Tucker, he came from the USFL. I mean, yeah, this is... Go get talent is talent, right? Yep. Maybe it took him some time in the CFL to develop, but uh, people talk about pairing up Hutchinson with somebody else, maybe whether it's James Houston or someone on the team, but the Lions went and got somebody at least. That, yeah, this would be just another signing, but the fact that he's from the CFL, the fans are going to bring this up. You're right. They are going to bring it up, and I'm, I'm not mad at him. Don't, t- don't get me wrong. I think this is – these. it's like talking about uniforms. Um, I'm not sure that it, you can expect it to have any impact on anything, but – I think fans love to think about it, talk about it, come up with their suggestions, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm not finding who that quarterback was. I'll I'll figure it out. But anyway, long story short, okay, why not? Why not? It doesn't really cost you anything. He's. What's interesting is I wonder if any other team was after him. You know, was he was he a coveted player? Was he a player that multiple teams wanted and he chose Detroit? 
Are lines ahead of the curve here? You know, they they went out and they got the leading sack guy in the CFL. Well, this isn't a guy like they just like, you know, hey, we think we see something here, and which they might, but he won the defensive player of the year. It's a, he's he's probably if you're a CFL fan, you know who he is. Yeah. Right? Doug, you're a CFL fan. Well, I mean, I, I like the Hamilton Tiger Cats, but I don't think I could name one player on their roster. <laughs> I remember Rocky DiPietro as a kid growing up, so he seemed to do everything for them. But, I mean, who are the greatest CFL players that have ever joined the NFL? Warren Moon is uh, is number one, right? I mean, he – so I'm going to have to see if we can find uh, some great CFL – some great CFL players that – all right. I'm uh, reading an M Live article from December 20th where the Lions hosted Matthew Betts okay. for a tryout. So. so here's a list from just some blogger Warren Moon at five, Doug Flutie at four, Ricky Williams at three. What? Cameron Wake at two, Joe Theismann, the number one CFL player who opted to join the Toronto Argonauts after his negotiations broke off with the Miami Dolphins. So there you go. Maybe we'll get the Joe Theismann of defensive ends here. And Matthew Betts. Go Betts. This did not come up earlier in the show when we asked you, what is the best thing that could happen this offseason? <laughs> go to the CFL and sign the best defensive rush end they have. Not one person. Not one person said, go get Matthew Betts. Should the Lions trade Hutch, 248? <laughs> no, this is cool. This is seriously, sure, why not? Why the F not? 